Hi, welcome to the Mostly Mike Show. Today I'm going to show you how I dealt with a forest fire that I encountered while out riding my bike. I had no formal training or experience fighting forest fires, but felt that I had to do something until the firefighters arrived. I felt that this story was definitely worth sharing with you, so here's what happened. I was on my way home around dusk when this strange glow caught my eye. I realized that the woods to my left was actually on fire. Oh gosh. Although stunned, thoughts raced through my head for a moment. What should I do? What could I do? I then figured that I'd better park my bike well out of harm's way. Oh my, I never thought to turn the GoPro on when I was riding up to this. I gotta get my bike out of the way so it doesn't get caught in this thing. I'm riding down this trail and I spotted a forest fire in the distance and I got on this quad road and I dialed 911 and gave the operator the best description as I could to the whereabouts of this fire, being that there were no addresses in the woods. I left my number to give the volunteer fire companies that responded in case they need me to guide them into the fire from a known address. I had to do something until they got to the scene, so I started kicking the burning materials back into where the fire had already burned, which was actually seeming to work. I'm trying to get this thing kind of under control here. Fire company's called, 911's called. And I'm keeping my phone hands open. <clears throat> Ashes don't feel so good on the legs, but I want to save this woods. Of course, I had forgotten in all of the chaos that I had a GoPro Hero 9 mounted on my chest with the MaxMod lens. I'm going to do what I can until the fire company gets here. So I recorded what I could of basically the fire as seen from my point of view and me mumbling some stuff here and there as I was doing it. There was no time to get fancy shots from a tripod. Keep in mind that if you decide to fight a fire, evaluate the risks and consequences involved with fighting a fire like this. I'm going to go up here and see, see what I can do. It's freaking hot. First off, I had no protective gear or proper tools to fight a fire. I was wearing nylon shorts, 5'10 low top shoes, a synthetic tech fabric jersey. Flames and sparks could melt these materials and cause severe burns. I'm just going to kick this stuff further into where it's already burning. I don't believe it. I tried to constantly remain upwind of the smoke and flames by alternating sides of the burned area, which was about a hundred feet or so in diameter. When the wind shifted, I positioned myself where the smoke and flying embers couldn't come my way. I continued to monitor where I had already kicked out the flames because they would frequently reignite. I kept making my way around the entire perimeter just doing what I could to prevent the fire from spreading any further. Something to keep in mind if you're dealing with a forest fire. If winds do pick up and the fire goes out of control, the safest place to be is in the center of the circle where the fuel has already been depleted because there's nothing left to burn there. Here they come. That branch is dead. Over here, fellas! Over here! Ah, uh, it started back up over there. I put that part of it out. Uh, I'm a mountain biker. I was out on my bike and uh, I discovered it. Yes, sir. It's not that bad. If you guys have a couple backpacks, you might be able to get it under control. I'm just kicking it into itself. Fortunately, the winds were relatively calm, and in a short time, I had all the flames out. It's 
get this part over here now. I'm gonna get, I don't want to get into the live trees. I gotta get up wind of the smoke. I think I got it almost put out. It's gonna keep it from spreading. Starting up again right here. Oh god. Fires get out and remain vigilant for reignitions until I heard sirens coming from a distance. Okay, we got it down to just one little part. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get these guys directed in here. I can at least put the embers out. I rode out to meet the firefighters and directed them to the burn site where they brought backpack sprayers to extinguish any of the remaining embers. How we doing? Yes, sir. Where is it? I, I put it out with my feet. It was about 100 feet in diameter, but there's still embers down here. I can show you guys how to get a hose down. Well, it's maybe, can we get from here to there? I don't think you can, but a hose would reach it probably. Okay. Or a couple right, backpacks. Uh, Alright, I'll lead you guys in. you guys have? What's that? How much hose is on this thing? Oh, we don't have the hose. How far down in there is it? I'd say it's maybe 75 yards tops. You know, it's just over, it's straight over there. Okay. But I could I'll lead you guys down I'll in. Make an area, is it? This is about 100 feet in diameter. I took a picture of it with my phone while it was still daylight out yet. I might take an engine down first. Yeah, we'll down. You might be just as well with that. I mean, I got it all kicked out. Here's what you're dealing with out there. With that? Oh yeah. I mean, it was about a hundred foot diameter area. Yeah. But if you guys want to follow me, I'll yep. show you the way down in. So it's a little bit muddy through these ruts here, but I took this sideway here and it seems okay. Little mud here. But there are some embers here and there. I mean, I like I said, I went the whole perimeter and I just kicked everything into where it already burnt. I didn't know what else to really do. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of common sense, I guess, there. You know, this whole woods would have burnt down though if I wouldn't have seen it, I think. And I thought, is it a controlled burn of somebody, you know? Yeah, I wonder how Well, how even got. I'll show you something I've seen in here, and I'd have to look to find it. Someplace over here, I saw what looks to be a like a campfire looking thing. And again, I'm no investigator. Well, no, that's my job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I think it was down this way. Yeah, right here. Doesn't that look kind of... Yep, that looks like a campfire. The cause of this fire was determined to be from a small pile of wood that must have been a campfire left unsupervised. I have no idea. Oh, that tree was on fire. You can see it smoke in there too. I don't know if my light's helping you guys or hurting you. Crazy stuff. 
Yeah. I'm glad I spotted it when I did. Me too. It's a nice little piece of woods in here. You want me to shine my light around for you? Um, uh, like, a, it's a pretty good headlight. <laughs> yeah, it is a good headlight. I'm seeing that. I'm trying to hold the... I don't want to do it with the Good job with it, there. Thank you very much. You saved us a lot of work. I revisited the site the following day to get a better idea of how large the burn area was, which they estimated to be approximately one acre in size. I feel fortunate to have been riding by and able to keep the fire contained. With the start that it had, it could have destroyed much more property had it not been discovered and reported. So if you're out riding your bike, hiking, or whatever you enjoy doing in the great outdoors and you smell smoke or see fire, Please keep a questioning attitude and look for the source. Keep yourself out of harm's way and know your limitations so you don't get hurt. There were risks involved with what I did, perhaps some of them not so smart, which I was willing to accept the consequences and was fairly confident that I could at least reduce the destruction caused by this fire. If you don't feel confident fighting a fire and do nothing more than call 911 to report it, you will still make a huge difference in the outcome. Almost every community has first responders who fight fires, save lives with emergency care, fight crime, and sometimes all the above. Many volunteer their time and efforts every day and are ready to risk their lives at a moment's notice. When you see these people, be sure to thank them for their selfless acts which many take for granted. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed, and enter any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching this Mostly Mike Show presentation, and I'll see you next time.